hello. Now, dance can be a little bit, uh, you can feel a bit disconnected from it. Um, some people sort of perceive it as a frivolous activity or the impossibly high physical standards are really difficult to relate to. So I'm going to remind you that we all have a body that we live in and move in day in, day out. So close your eyes, actually close them. And I want you to feel your weight of your body in your chair. Feel the seat supporting you. Notice your breath. Just observe it, don't change it. And then, if you can, get into the extremities and wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, and just remember where you inhabit. Marvellous. Lovely. Right. Open your eyes. Now, what do you see or feel when you look at this image of a dance mama? Does the departure from the traditional aesthetic unsettle you or shock you? Do you think it's beautiful? Is it safe? The reason why you may not have seen an image like this before is because according to a recent survey by Parents and Carers in Performing Arts campaign, seven out of ten parents across music, theatre and dance are considering leaving their careers in the arts due to the enormous weight of systemic, cultural and social pressures. This means years of money, effort, skill and talent are being abandoned. And this is having a devastating impact on the dance sector. We're hemorrhaging talent. In an industry of approximately 40,000 people, about 80% of us identify as women. And without the parental presence in the studio or in the workspace, we're seeing poor practice at best, discrimination at worst, and a lack of research. And this, in turn, is having an impact on female leadership. We're seeing fewer female choreographers and fewer female key decision makers. Now, Tara, pictured here, is a first artist at the Royal Ballet Company and she's embodying everything that we're striving for. She's been supported through her pregnancies to perform. She's had a flexible maternity leave with expert health care to enable her to return to the stage at Covent Garden for a second time now. I, like Tara, am in the 30% who've maintained their careers in dance, using my dancer traits of tenacity and resilience and applying them to my circumstances to maintain that career and in doing so have developed my purpose in inspiring other people to increase that percentage of those who stay. Because I believe dance is for everyone. Now, back in 2012, before I became a mum, there were very few images of dance around at all. It was being explored choreographically by different artists. It, there was limited reporting but there were very few formal conversations, and I just couldn't understand, in an industry with so many women, why pregnancy wasn't being given attention. All that existed for me was an information sheet produced by our industry advocacy body, One Dance UK, and whilst that contained brilliant information, it just wasn't enough for such a big life event, for me, I felt, in an animated career. When I was pregnant, I was freelancing for a range of world-class dance organisations as a teacher, choreographer, project manager and presenter. And I remember, nervously, going to show this image to one of my bosses at a dance company I was teaching for, Ron Bear. As I apprehensively showed him my sonogram on my phone, he weirdly produced a similar image of his own because it turned out his wife was pregnant and we were due within about a week of each other. This gave me the unique opportunity to be on a similar journey to him at the same time, and Joss saw this as an opportunity to bring in a teaching assistant for me, who I could mentor, and in return, Emily could demonstrate for me, particularly when my centre of gravity shifted, and then I was also working on a youth dance piece towards the London 2012 Olympic Games celebrations. And here, my choreographic mentor, Kerry Nichols, 
was also a parent. So I was in a really unusual situation to be surrounded by peers and colleagues who were forging fantastic careers as parents, largely unsung, which enabled me to keep dancing and teaching right up until six weeks before our daughter was born. Cut to me lying on a hospital bed in the maternity ward, being asked to curve my back for my spinal injection. And all that's going through my mind is Cunningham C's, Cunningham C's, Cunningham C's. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's one of these, which is a curving movement from the modern dance technique founded by American choreographer Merce Cunningham. I could not believe my dancer brain would not switch off in this very auspicious moment where I was about to have a forceps delivery, episiotomy, and two litres blood loss. You see, dancers from a young age are encouraged to push beyond your boundaries, and in this moment for me, it was wildly unhelpful. I thought I could handle the sleep deprivation and the physical exertion, but my body disagreed, and the first few weeks for me as a mum were tough. Freelance, on maternity leave, and without that peer support group, my identity changed. You see, the other thing about dance is it requires your heart and soul to be put into the art form, and it becomes part of your identity. So when you're cut off from that community or resource, it can be incredibly isolating. Those first six months for me were a brutal, but brilliant, examination of who I was without my ephemeral dance career. And the hard-won gold was remembering my intrinsic value as a human and exploring my new role as a mum. I returned to work six months later, frustrated to find that there still wasn't any support for me re-entering the workspace as I'd seen in other sectors. So I channeled this frustration into writing an article for One Dance UK's magazine One in 2014 and interviewed friends and colleagues who were at different stages of parenthood and different genders to see from different backgrounds and perspectives how they did it. And this rendered the most amazing stories of courage, resilience and tenacity that I felt needed space. So I decided to start a website and Dance Mama was born. Now, I carried on collecting these interviews. We've got over 70 of them now. And I did this as I pursued my own career in learning at Rombert. And there was an opportunity for me to go for a promotion. This was unfortunately timed with my second maternity leave as I was pregnant with our son in 2016. But knowing how rare an opportunity this was, I applied anyway. I emboldened my resolve watching the film Suffragette and I successfully interviewed for that role as a job share when my son was just eight days old, husband primed with a bottle downstairs. Meanwhile, my instinct that others would be benefiting from these stories was being proven to me because colleagues and friends would be coming up to me spontaneously saying, thank you, we've now got a pathway to navigate our way through parenthood or, or some idea. This was a turning point for me in realizing that my heart was in helping other parents in dance develop their careers. So I decided to make Dance Mama into an organization which would provide everything that I'd wished for, ongoing support, inspiration, connection, and information for parents in dance. Some of the um, things that were coming through these interviews were a feeling of being undervalued, one of my peers had actually been excluded from a pro project because she was pregnant. Others had been treated very differently from peers who hadn't got families. The next was the lack of understanding across the sector for the changes physiologically and psychologically that happen in pregnancy and parenthood. And for those who were not supported in the space, it's, it's really not helping the diversity in the sector. Then there's the converse issue of those of us with high physical awareness. We have a different lens with which to experience pregnancy, birth, and the postnatal phase. And this could be harnessed as a positive experience, but we do need healthcare experts who understand the demands of dance. And then finally, those systemic pressures of low wages for dancers, 
lack of affordable childcare or inability to pay for the childcare that might actually be helpful, and then the request to take your child or baby into a studio with you is often denied, meaning many of my peers are just opting out, understandably. So in 2019, I wrote the Dance Mama Festo, and these are the foundation principles on which the organization developed into an information hub, a mentoring service, and events. And now we can look at it. <laughs> One of the first events that I produced was with Sadler's Wells in partnership with them at their theater. And this was called Dance Mum Alive. Here we removed the main barrier of childcare. And this enabled my colleagues to bring their children, there were bean bags on the floor and goodie bags for the kids, and share their experiences of parenthood in the dance sector with each other, but also in front of an invited audience of representatives from organizations across the sector who could hear these challenges and start coming up with solutions. All was going well with uh, this and hoping to roll out more events when 2020 hit. And as theatres across the globe closed their doors and left their ghost lights on, we all leaned into online activity. And for me, that meant making the interviews into a podcast and pursuing my PhD at Christchurch Canterbury University to start filling in some of that research gap but where I knew I could make the most immediate impact with the individual was through Dance Mum Alive. And pivoting online wasn't too big a leap to make because I'd already thought about broadcasting the content and making it accessible remotely. Sadler's Wells, One Dance UK, Dance Exchange, Yorkshire Dance and Clearcut all remained as partners, which was tremendous at a time where many organisations in dance were fighting for their survival. In January 2021, Arts Council England awarded us our funding. Four days after lockdown three was announced, giving me the genuine dance mama dilemma of choosing to pursue this project whilst simultaneously homeschooling. I knew if I felt despair and despondency, then my colleagues would be feeling the same. And if 2020 hadn't unprecedentedly amplified their problems, then 2021 was gonna be the nail in the coffin on their careers sadly proven by that 70% statistic of those who are thinking of leaving. But by the end of 2021, we delivered 10 monthly webinars and workshops to a cohort of over 100 women across the UK, in and out of different roles and organisations. And this enabled me to connect them to 38 incredible specialists across all sorts of disciplines, sharing their wisdom and giving them hope of how they could develop their careers in dance as parents. By creating a community of like-minded humans together, the feedback was amazing and very humbling still, and some went as far as saying it was life-changing. It enabled some to raise their own funds and foster creative ideas, or for others, to simply step back into the industry. For those on maternity leave, like Bethany Kingsley Garner, who's a principal at Scottish Ballet, it gave her bespoke classes, a community, and she was back on stage just two weeks ago. As we move through 2022 and beyond, Dance Mum wants to help more women in the dance sector and parents in dance continue their careers and be valued in doing so. But as I said to you at the beginning, Dance is often overlooked. Think back to how you felt with that image of Tara and perhaps reflect on how these issues manifest in your own sector. The pandemic has highlighted the connection to our bodies. Dancers know this. We know it's our greatest resource and source. I've had the privilege across my career of seeing the transformative power of dance change the lives of 20,000 people whether it be an older adult living with Parkinson's to a teenager who sees an insanely talented dancer for the first time and in in inspired to create their own choreography fearlessly for the first time. Dance mamas are all agents of this change, reaching similar masses of people, often invisibly, often quietly, real, genuine change. And I feel it's high time they were centre stage and celebrated 
for all the fine dancer traits that they embody of courage, empathy, tenacity, and resilience. Because by pursuing their careers while simultaneously raising the next generation, they're exploring what it means to be human together all the time. And Dance Mama wants to help keep them moving their worlds. So, I invite you, after this sonogram on the Dance Mama world, the next time you see a dancer on stage, in an ad, or perhaps in the film I'm about to show you, consider not only what it took for them to get there, but for how long can they stay there if they are a parent. Thank you. 